Well, it, it, it has a great appeal to people in um, parties in conflict. It has a great appeal because they, when I ask people to talk about a time when their dignity is violated, it seems to open doors. But then what I realized was that most people don't even understand what it is. They don't have a conception, they have a feeling about it, but they don't know what it is. So my methodology now starts with bringing parties together, conflicting parties together, and asking them to become students of dignity for maybe two or three days. I go through everything that I've learned about dignity because I've done a lot of research um, and I just share all that. I share everything that I know about dignity with them. And they sit there and you know like taking a class in Dignity 101. And they, there's something that happens in that learning process because it's more than just learning, it's a, it's a sharing of understanding about dignity. and. Um, they are not the same after three days of, of learning intensively about what dignity is. They can't look at each other in, that, um, in the same sort of this is my enemy way. They are able to see each other as sharing a, you know, a basic humanity and sharing a, a deep desire to be treated with dignity. And um, it's just, it's kind of magical. Once they, once they get to that point, um, I then ask them, would you like to have a discussion about your conflict? And most of them say yes, we really do want to talk about it, but the conversation is so different. You know, it, it becomes a connected conversation. They're not disconnected anymore. They're able to resolve their differences in a way that keeps that platform of a shared dignity um, as their scaffolding. And it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful process, and I, you know, I've had a lot of luck with it. And maybe it is just luck, but I think there's something in the power of dignity and having that shared learning experience that helps people reconnect, and that's the goal.